Sanoko. Welcome to this podcast. First of all, thank you so much for giving this time for being here and helping our audience to get over about all of these things. I would start with your introduction. Awesome. Thanks so much for the opportunity to be on your podcast, Shampavi. So to introduce myself, I actually have a bit of an eclectic background. So I started in music, actually, as my very first career. It was a highly creative domain. And my goal was to eventually become a film composer at some point. Things took a different turn. I decided to move more into the science and math side of the field. So I moved from music into acoustic engineering, which involves designing things like speakers, microphones, architecture, everything related to sound. And along that journey, I discovered that my real passion was for data because data is this field where you can create products nearly instantly if you know how to program and code and develop well. For architecture, for example, that'll take years to develop, but you can see very quick returns when it comes to data. So I worked for the majority of my career within the data space, analysis, visualization, storytelling. And the final leg of my journey is where I am now. I decided to pursue my entrepreneurial dream of having my own business. And now I have communication coaching for data professionals as my day-to-day -day work. So I work with professionals one-on-one -on -one who want to accelerate their career, prepare for future managerial positions by working on their communication skills and also training teams. So helping teams upskill when it comes to these important soft skills in the industry. Okay, so you have something of your own as well and you are maybe completely devoting your time in that, that same thing, right? Exactly. Okay, that sounds so kind of the name for uh, your own uh, business. What's the name for that? Yeah, so my business is The Hidden Speaker, and the website is thehiddenspeaker.com. Oh, so awesome. Very nice. So, like, you have been in the data field only. So, uh, I even researched about you a little bit, and you also told me that you have worked a little bit in the data engineering part of, as well, right? So, can you just help me brief out what uh, data engineering is, or what exactly you have done in that particular? Sure. So, data engineering is essentially a discipline within data. The big three i'd say are data engineering data science data analysis and data engineering involves taking data and making it more accessible in more optimized forms so it involves taking data integrating metadata integrating business logic putting it in efficient schemas making sure that the data arrives in a timely fashion and it is of high quality so what i did over the course of my career was focus a little bit on that element and that was just out of necessity. My primary role was as an analyst and storyteller, but often I would need to work with data engineers, learn data engineering on my own to build pipelines, bring the data in, make sure everything was clean. So I'd say my career was often multidisciplinary and that I had to learn all these different skill sets at once. Okay, great. So like you summarize our data engineering in a very good manner because uh, in the market, there is a lot of confusion between the data science, what is data analysis, and even what is data engineering, right? But yeah, you put that data engineering part so well that I'm sure that after hearing this out, no one would have a like, discrepancy that okay, data engineering or data sciences are different things. They are different. Actually, yes, because some of the other things are different in both of these. So very well that uh, said about Christopher. And even you said about the data storytelling, right? So like, whenever we are presenting out our data to any of our stakeholders or to any other person, why we need a sort of a data storytelling what is the relevance of that particular? I would say that storytelling is so important because if you don't have storytelling, it's kind of like looking at the world through a keyhole. So if I were to tell you a fact, for example, I hired a thousand people last year, for example, what does that mean? It sounds like a big number, but if I told you that I hired 800 people last year, maybe it's higher this year. If I told you I hired 2000 people last year, then it's a smaller number this year. So storytelling helps put facts and numbers into context so we understand why they're important. If I, for example, also added context and said last year, we hired 2,000 people and this year we don't have enough budget to support the 1,000 we hired, then that's a problem. So you can see how all these different pieces of information from the past as context can influence how we perceive facts in the present. So storytelling helps you understand putting things into context. But even more importantly than that, it's about what conclusions can we derive from those facts. So once we understand I hired a thousand people this year, what do we need to do about that? Should I hire a thousand more people next year? Should we hire less people next year? It all comes down to the analysis that you do to figure out what the best course of action to take is. 
So storytelling is about communicating with stakeholders in a way that speaks to their business sense. You speak to not only what's going on, but why does it matter and what do we need to do next? Absolutely, absolutely well presented because even I also work as an instructor for different edtech. So whenever we come out of data storytelling part now, so if students come and ask, okay, what's the need of the data storytelling? It is such a very simple module. We can just skip or skip that like that. So I'm pretty sure that after listening this from you, that what is the relevance of data storytelling now? I won't get these questions anymore. <laughs> okay, so um, even for presenting the data, uh, maybe in the form of a storytelling process only, we even require some good communication skills too. So what is the use of learning those communications for presenting our data stored data and complex storytelling? And what will be your suggestion to the freshers that how they should learn to communicate to present that to the data in a form of a story? I would recommend that if you're a fresher and you're an aspiring analyst, you want to enter the field, communication is one of the most important things you can start developing as early as possible. An analogy I like to use is if your competence is here, but your communication ability is here, people will perceive your competence as here, just as high as your communication ability. So your communication determines how others perceive you. If you go in into an interview, you claim you have all these technical skills, but you don't sell yourself as a good communicator, the interviewer will be less likely to hire you. So in a whole stack of applicants with very similar skill sets as you technically, being able to communicate well differentiates you and makes you a more likely candidate. So my recommendation for people interested in working on their communication skills is to record yourself. If you have an important interview coming up, record yourself delivering those typical questions. So typical technical questions, how would you answer them? Typical behavioral questions, how would you answer them? When you record yourself, you allow yourself to see areas you can improve all in the safety of your own home. So not on the important day when you need to prove yourself, but in the safety of your own home, you can determine how can I improve my timing, my pausing, my delivery, and make sure that when it's your important day, when that comes, you can deliver well. So my biggest advice is always to record yourself to help yourself iteratively improve. Absolutely right. And anyway, it is said that uh, just stand in front of a mirror and try to speak as much as you can so that you can just check out your expressions also, how you are saying those particular things as so absolutely right, uh, Christopher, even like this storytelling, this data storytelling, or even just don't take data. In general, if we talk about the storytelling uh, part. So what is your opinion? Should uh, this be a part of the college curriculums or not? I think it should absolutely be a part of college curriculum. It actually wasn't part of my college curriculum. And for that reason, I feel like it should have been. No matter what role you take in the future, if it's a trade or if it's a corporate job or if it's a leadership position, you need to be able to communicate well. That could be verbal and that could also be written. So you might argue and say as a software engineer, for example, you write code all day, you don't have that many meetings with people, but still you need to communicate through your documentation. You need to make sure that it's accessible, easy to understand, that people can access it later in the future and understand what you're trying to say. So no matter what role you have at any stage of your career, you need solid communication skills. And the role of college being to prepare us for our adult careers, it's important to have that as early as possible to help people start developing it. Absolutely right, because we never know from where our stakeholders are belonging. No, not only in the data field also, but in any other field also, we never know about that particular thing. So if this thing might be implemented or maybe in the future, this might have a lot of the students to get in the jobs much more quicker than they are getting it now. So uh, even like what we have seen up till now is that, that soft skills are one of the parts and coding is one of the parts, right? So every student is focuses over coding. The four years of graduation are just like rubbed in the coding part portions, doing DLC and doing that and that. But like why aren't they focusing over the soft skills? So you have even seen a lot of tech professionals, you are doing that so same thing. So what did you find? That why is everyone too much into coding? Why aren't they taking that soft skills more seriously? Rather, they are taking the coding. I think there are perhaps several reasons for it. One that I found to be the most compelling is that technical skills are actually sometimes a bit easier to learn in the sense that we can learn them independently. So all I need to learn technical skills is an internet connection and my laptop. And I can learn SQL, I can learn Python, I can learn Tableau, Power BI, I can learn anything that I want. It's a free university online. 
But communication skills and soft skills are in some sense harder to learn because you often need to work with someone else to develop them. When you're speaking, you need to see if your information is being received well by your audience. Is it landing? Did I not get that right? That kind of interactive feedback is so important. So soft skills often involve working with other people. And that goes into the second reason why I think that technical skills are often focused on more than soft skills. It comes down to a lot of personality. A lot of us as technical professionals, we prefer keeping to ourselves. There's a lot more introversion that's common among technical professionals. We prefer to sit at our desks, do the technical work, create great solutions, and perhaps what's outside of our comfort zone is talking to stakeholders, talking to managers, talking to executives. So soft skills often involve pushing the boundaries of our comfort zone, and that's naturally uncomfortable. But my biggest advice to professionals who want to advance their career is the only way to grow is to be uncomfortable. So if you want to make sure that you have a managerial position in the future, even an executive position, you need to push the boundaries of that comfort zone. You may not be comfortable right now with speaking to people, but if every day you push yourself to be a little better about moving that boundary forward, speaking to one more person, saying one thing during a meeting, giving one more presentation, then you can see yourself improve drastically over time. Absolutely right. So you should take the stand and you should on your own come out and do that restrictive thing. No one is going to just pull up your hand and say that, okay, you have to present them. <laughs> okay. Exactly. So like your career which you are pursuing in like being a tech professional for the data storytelling part, this is quite a uh, very like rare thing which I have even heard from my end. I have heard people being data scientists, being data analyst, analysts, data engineers, many things we have just heard about. But your career which you are pursuing, that's a little rare sort of a thing, actually what I see. So how do you get the motivation to choose this career? The motivation behind this was all the experience I had in my data career. I worked on dashboards, I worked on reports, analyses, and I realized that it's actually the last mile of the workflow that's perhaps the most important. You can have all this amazing technical work and the last, say, 10% where you communicate and present that work, that is crucial. Because if you've done an excellent job, but you're not able to communicate the value well, people will not perceive it as having, having any value whatsoever. So being able to talk to people gives them more respect of you and gives them more respect of your work. So I found that what I could uniquely offer to the community is being able to bridge that gap between data teams and the business that so often occurs and reducing that friction. So helping people become more confident as communicators themselves, helping them see, I have a voice that people can listen to and that I can impact change. I can do this amazing work and people will actually do something about it. It's incredibly empowering when you realize how powerful your communication skills can be. So that's the reason that I decided to pursue this particular mission. Okay, that's, that's so wonderful that even you just started with data engineering part, you just de developed a lot of dashboards, those things, and then you just came into this role. So if there is a newbie, a freshman who just wants to enter this role, so what could be the roadmap, what could be the process to enter this particular field? A roadmap for pursuing analytics, I'd say that it would start with building the technical skills. Those are always the foundation because you can't do anything technical unless you know them. So I would recommend the fundamental skills like learning Excel, learning SQL, and learning some kind of data visualization tool. With those three as just your fundament, you can start creating projects on your own. The reason why I was able to successfully transition into data from a non-technical background was because I focused on those skills and I created a solid portfolio showcasing a diversity of projects. So I took a bunch of data sets online, I did projects on them, and I did write-ups on what I found. And when it came time to interview and talk about those projects, I was able to communicate the value of the insights and how I could do something similar for the companies that I would eventually work for. So the biggest advice I would give to people aspiring to enter this field is build those technical skills, but alongside them build the soft skills. So learn how to present the results of your work well. So when it comes to interview time, you can do an excellent job. Okay, so it's all about first of all learning a technical, but yeah, not keeping the soft skills apart. Mm -hmm. Simultaneously, you can just take both of the things and go on this respective way, right? Yes, so both are absolutely important to develop as early as possible and in tandem instead of separately. Absolutely. So 
even you told that you had the interest in music and that the film making in the starting so still do you pursue that particular thing yes i still do music on the side some piano playing some electronic sound synthesis on the side nothing too as substantial as i did before but it's still a big passion and hobby of mine okay that's so great so we could just quickly take a very rapid fire round to you so yeah hobby to i got to know about your that is your um like maybe be playing the different instrument instrument that's the yeah one. i used to play piano violin guitar flute a bunch of different things right now though i <laughs> restrict myself to piano mostly uh okay so like i uh, can i get a number that total how many instruments you have played in the past something all of those Oh, I think it was pretty much limited to those that I mentioned, maybe five or so instruments, the piano, violin, guitar, flute, and some, a bit of drums, but nothing too substantial. So a little bit of smattering of all those different instruments. Okay, so do you sing also, or you just play the instrument? Mostly playing the instruments, though singing is something that I'd hope to get to into the future. <laughs> okay, so next, what are your future plans? So I'm excited about the growth of my current business, The Hidden Speaker. I started this year at, in January 2023, and I've seen a lot of growth so far in just six months. So I'm very excited to see what the next six months brings. I've been focusing, as I mentioned previously, on primarily one-on-one -on -one coaching, but I'm doing a bit more focus now on team trainings. And that's exciting for me because I can have more impact on more people in less time. So I'm excited about that and also attending more conferences and just building my brand. So I, I think there's a lot of cool new things to come and it's always a pleasure getting to meet people like yourself in the field where we can talk about these data subjects and also, yeah, just expand on my current offering and where I want to go. So yeah, that's the plans. <laughs> okay, so no plans for uh, in this music field or something in the future, right? No plans right like now, no plans concretely, but keeping it as a hobby on the side. Okay, okay, so great. So, Mr. Bhai, it was so good to know about you and the career which you posed. That's quite a little different for us also to get to know how you can come into this field and what are the requirements and what's the complete process. So it was so great to have you here talking with you here, and I hope my audience will surely get some or the other good information, good motivation from you to start this or pursue this career. At least in the softer skills part, I hope they are now going to pay attention a little bit more. Thank you, thank you so much, Christopher, for coming here and joining me over here. It was a pleasure. Thanks so much for having me on, Shampoo.